and welcome to another episode of Tables, Avers and Chairs. I'm your host, Avers. Uh, we're in Camden Town, sunny old London, here for Progress Super Strong Style 16 Tournament. One of the competitors here we have today, the facilitator, has become the facilitated. It's Flash Morgan Webster. Flash, how's it going, man? It's good, man. Really, uh, really digging this pub. I'm really liking the music that's going on in the background as well, so I think it's quite fitting. Yeah, it's, it's nice ambience. Nice ambience. Um, first things first, you've been injured for quite a while. Uh, you've eased yourself back into things. How, how's things going on that for you? Um, good, man. I feel, I'm feeling good. If, on my respect, I'm feeling good. Shoulders feeling good. I had a little bit of a niggle a couple of weeks back uh, when I went to match with James Drake. Uh, I'd hurt it the day before, and I was a little bit worried that something was up with it, but it's been good since, uh, physio sorted me out. Uh, so physically good, mentally, I'm not going to lie, it's been quite difficult. Um, so those, the, for those that don't know, sorry to interrupt, for those that don't know, can you tell everybody the injuries that you suffered and Yes, yeah, so I had a qualifying match for the Dory Quizway Classic against Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, here at Progress, and in that match uh, I suffered a double fractured ankle. Uh, carried on the match stupidly, which then led to a uh, dislocated shoulder, which uh, was a torn labrum. The labrum is the muscle that keeps the shoulder pretty much in the joint. So I ripped that clean off the bone and had to have that surgically repaired. So I was out recovery-wise six to seven months, but I also, because I had no insurance, which I'm, I've, I've got insurance now and I'm pushing everybody in British rest and all the rest that should get insurance, it cost 20, 30 pound a month, it's hardly anything. Uh, because I didn't have insurance, I had to go through the wonderful NHS, Vote Labour, just keep it, just keep it. Um, but because I had to go through the NHS, I was on a waiting list, of course, because it wasn't uh, an emergency, yeah. and I got sorted out great, I had great rehab, great uh, physio, and they sorted me right out, so overall I was out for 10 months. But as I said, physically, feeling fit, feeling healthy, mentally, it's a tough one, because I probably went out arguably in my biggest match I've ever had. Yeah, I'd probably, most certainly. I was probably starting to hit a real stride as well. There was a lot of people that didn't like me, uh, were a fan of my work, and there still is a lot of people that are not a fan of work. You can't win everybody, I know that. But I feel like I was starting to uh, win over a few of the people who were unsure about me. And unfortunately, I'm 10 months out, I've come back, and you expect to kind of hit that stride of where you were Where at. I was. Yeah. And you forget that while you've been away, people have been hitting it out of the park and nailing it for a year and they've got a year's worth of momentum behind them and I come back and expect me to carry on with that momentum I had and of course people have got to either A, be reintroduced to me yeah. or they've got to get to know me if they've ever seen me before and I've got to start to prove to people that I can still go and I can still have that buzz about me. So it's been hard because I've, I've expected to get stuff or expect stuff to slot into place and to have that buzz about me and when it doesn't happen it can be quite demoralising yeah. it can be quite hard but this week especially I found quite hard but I had my match yesterday with uh, with Haskins and I came out and I spoke to Mark Andrews last night and I said I'm just more determined than ever now to kind of just kill it that's how I'm, I'm so I'm so motivated now to just smash it out of the park yeah well, I mean you say there that you stupidly carried on um, it's easy in hindsight saying something like that but obviously in your shoes like you say, it was the biggest match for the, you know, the, the Cruiserweight Classic. Whether you were going to qualify or not, you've got them eyes on you. Yeah, that was the point. It was the eyes. Uh, the eyes of the world. I mean, I also knew, for example, it was going to be watched by Triple H. It was going to yep. be watched by William Regal. And it, I, I think it went on the WWE.com as well. It did. It went on the YouTube channel as well, which it currently has over 300,000 uh, 300, views. So a lot of people have seen that match. And... That was it, really. It was just in my head, like, I've got to get through this match. Because if it was the first time, maybe it was the first time that Regal or Trips had really seen anything of me, then I wanted to be a good impression, even if I was hurt. Did you get any feedback off either of them? Or? Just kind of, good thing off Regal was, he just said, kind of, I'm, he was like, good work, thanks, sir. I'm apologetic, you got hurt. He was like, but take your time, don't rush back. And that was something that kept with me, don't yeah. rush back. And he said, uh, I love your style and I love your look, so keep up the good work. So, yeah, he's a, he's a big so, Fred Perry man. Yeah, he, he, he loves his Northern soul, so yeah. we've had many conversations about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm originally from Blackpool, he's a big Northern soul, yeah. there, so it doesn't surprise me that he's a big fan of that. Um, <coughs> what, what was going through your mind during that match? Because, I mean, like I say, it's the biggest match of your career, all the eyes on you. Is it a case of, I've got to finish this match for myself? I've got to finish this match kind of for Zap because you know it's a, it's a big match for him as well as yourself it's a big match for the company that you're wrestling for 
What's about what was going through your mind during it? Well, I think the ankle got hit, and I think I was like, oh, I think it's okay. And then after I did the second dive and felt the second crunch, I was like, it's gone, my ankle's gone. And then yeah, I, didn't you still do like kind of a an attempted splash or something? Or? I still hit a four fifty splash yeah. with a fractured ankle like, and wow. a dislocated shoulder. So I, 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 my surgeon's seen it. Surgeon's gone. It's impossible. What you've done, that's impossible right there. So, uh, but I. I don't know, as the match went on, I kind of, especially after the shoulder came out, I think I just started getting really upset and angry with myself, like, oh, I'm fucked, I'm fucked, I need to get, I need to get, I need to get out here, I need to finish this match soon, I need to finish, I think I just went to autopilot mode, I don't think I was thinking about anything until after, as soon as the match was over, I can remember just lying there, really upset, really annoyed, but in the match itself, I think it was just autopilot, I think it was survival mode that came in. I think if most people watch that match back, with the knowledge of, of the injuries you sustained, during it, it's it's remarkable that you finish that match. To be honest, well, with, with the battle, like Bala, when if you've seen the you've seen the film Bala twenty four, he says like he it happens to him, his shoulder comes out and he pops his back in mm. and then carries on the match. Now, if you watch me and Saber, my shoulder is out of joint. My I get back to the curtain and it's still not in the socket. It took three doctors and two nurses to put it back into the socket. And they turned and said to me after the third attempt, trying to put it in, if this doesn't go back in. We're gonna have to knock you out and do it. And the third attempt, luckily, it popped back in. So like, Bala got through it, and all credit to him. Great match, but he was able to put it back in the socket. Mine was still totally not. Mine was floating. My fingers were swollen up because all the bones were being pushed down into my hands. So, I mean, obviously, the WWE had to be interested in you to put you in that match. Yep. Um, you look at the people that were in them two qualifiers for progress Pete Dunne he's doing alright for himself yeah, yeah he is uh, Jack Gallagher obviously one of the the, the bigger names on, on 205 Live um, Zach he, he went into the Cruiserweight uh, Championship went to the quarterfinals yeah. the semifinals semis yeah um, and he's doing very very well in New Japan now as well so the fact that you a linked in with them three other guys shows that you're obviously on my radar it must have been frustrating getting the injury but um, recently you had a tryout yep WWE how did that go it's good I think everything went well um, it's real difficult because there's a lot of poker faces there there's yeah. a lot of fun and stuff like that a lot of good time but I think they impressed me they like me but you never know and you sometimes they contact people sometimes they don't contact people and again there's no skin off nose anybody else yeah. You've heard, like, Steve Carino who was there said that he had, and we all know Steve Carino's quit, but Steve Carino had seven failed tryout attempts, and that's not to say Steve Carino isn't one of the best. I think Adam Cole's had two. Exactly. I mean, he's man. not too shoddy, is Exactly. It? So, again, I don't even think it's how good you are. Sometimes I think it's, sometimes it's not a job, sometimes people think it's a job interview. It's not a job interview, it's a... Uh, they're looking for characters. It's a casting call. Fits, it's, yeah. They're looking to see, uh, okay, if we have something that comes up in the next five years, does this person fit the bill? Does he work hard? Will he fit into our company? So it's not even them looking at me for a job. It was possibly them looking at me to see in three years' time when a job comes up, would I be right for that job? So, but it went well. That's good to hear. Um, obviously, during the injury, that obviously had an impact on your income that you can make. Um, luckily, you uh, had a bit of luck on Deal or No Deal. I did have a little bit of luck on that. Well, the Deal or No Deal actually happened before the injury. But uh, it aired like not long afterwards, didn't it? It, it aired like a year. It took a whole year for it. To really? Aid, yeah. That but, bad? But, yeah. Wow. But I, but I, I've always been quite good with money, so yeah. I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of it. I had a lot of it when the injury came around, and luckily I had that because if I hadn't, I, I really would have struggled. One of the problems I'd had was uh, I made the transition over the last three months from uh, being a teacher to being a uh, full-time wrestler, and I was sorting out my. Uh, my money and stuff like that. So when I got hurt, I remember going and see if I could claim any sort of uh, disability or anything like that because I couldn't work. Yeah. I couldn't work in any way, shape, or form because I couldn't drive a car, so I couldn't couldn't even supply teach. And they said to me I hadn't paid any, and I hadn't paid enough national insurance in to be, which is unfortunate. But um, I understood. So luckily, I did have that deal, no deal money. And yeah, I have said to my girlfriend a couple of times, I, I had to spend all that on what I feel like nothing. And she's like, but we could have been in a very bad situation if you exactly. didn't have that money. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I would have loved to have spent that on fun things, but sometimes life is more important. You touched on uh, teaching. 
um, what is it that you teach exactly? Everything. <laughs> like, uh, uh, but I, I'm qualified in uh, fine arts, and so I'm qualified in fine arts. So I art and design. So I can teach DT as well. Is that but a primary or secondary? Secondary. So, but uh, currently I've just done a, a string at some schools teaching ethics, uh, DT, and PE as well. Because the school I'm working at the moment know about the wrestling background, so I'm more qualified to teach PE. Do any of the pupils come up to you and know? Oh, they all know. They oh, all right, know. Okay. Oh, they all know. Especially after Deal No Deal, they all know. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's cool. It's, 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 it's a good... Especially when you teach a lot of classes you don't know, they already know of you. So you've got, you're on a good... Especially with children, if you can make a good first impression with them, uh, you can get them on side and then you can kind of open doors and a talk and just get them... Right, you're, you're the cool teacher that does the wrestling. That is the case as well, but also at the same time, you like... When I first started teaching, I want to be their friend. You can't be their friend. No. Like, you can't. So, yeah, I am that cool teacher, but at the same time, I think it's one of those stern things as well. I've got to try to be stern, but get the respect as well. But it's, it opens the doors for the kids, which is good. Well, I saw you handling the kids at um, Future Shop. Week, which is, uh, quite one of the very few times I've seen you work. I suppose you worked as a heel. Yeah. Well, it kind of turned midway through the I was match, more. Maybe. I was more the I was more the antagonist, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, no, it was, it was great uh, Taking pictures with the kids during the interval. A lot of fun. That was quite fun. Yeah. Um, that was a great match, by the way, with Sonna Durson. I uh, enjoyed it very much. What's, what's your opinion of uh, that young man? He's really, really good. He is. I uh, wrestled Sonna about four years before, and he's a very different Sonna Durson than he was then. Um, he should be more places, he really should. And when he was piecing this together with me as well, like, it wasn't just me, if anyone watched that match, it wasn't just me, like, cat, if people were like, oh, I carried him, I didn't. It was a very much. Uh, on the same level that's all working together to put it together oh, yeah. and lots of fun two very good matches with um, <coughs> Travis Banks up at Future Shot recently oh, yeah I'm and, good um, yeah I, I think he's a name that's definitely going to be bursting out if not if not this year then definitely the next start of next year, year definitely. I agree maybe natural progression you know yeah, hopefully um, let's get back on wrestling talked about your injury talked about your uh, shoot job as it were um, so why is Scotty T. Hotty the greatest wrestler in the history of the world? <laughs> well, he's, he's not really. I, I, I have <laughs> met him and he is great. But uh, I think it was just when I got into wrestling, I got into it because of SmackDown 2. That's how I got into it. And you can imagine you're playing a game and there's a character that does the worm and then and then beats people. Why wouldn't he? When, in my head, why wouldn't it be the best character exactly. of all time? Exactly. So uh, unfortunately, when I watched Raw, he wasn't the best of all time. But. Uh, Still a lot of fun, and he is proof as well that if you can get yourself a gimmick that it's over, yeah, you can make a living definitely. for the rest of your life. Yeah, he is a fireman now, which is even even more crazy. But uh, if he wanted to, I have no doubt that he could still be making a full time living on just being a wrestler. And he would only really need to do the worm and, <laughs> and the place for good nuts. When did you um, start watching WWE full time then? Or did you watch WCW? No, it was WWE. Oh, WF. Uh, 2000, I think. Rumble 2000 might have been it. So I saw oh, the entire... on Channel 4. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the entire build up then to Mania. So I was a proper loved Austin. So when the turn happens, I lost my mind. Heartbreaking. Mind's. Lost Heartbreaking my mind. Stuff. I would have been around what? I would have been 10 years old? Yeah. 9, 10 years old? You're making me feel old now. <laughs> I think I'd just left school. 9 years old? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, just thought 10. I was just about to go into, into high school. So, out of um, all the guys from that era, who were the guys that you like really, like, try not, I wouldn't say influence you, but like, have the biggest bearing on your career so far? Well, my favourite wrestler, we're going to go for favourite, like, Shawn Michaels, absolutely love Shawn Michaels. Um, I don't think anyone touches him, like, for when it comes to sheer athleticism and emotional content, and then when he went away and he toned down the athleticism, when he came back and uh, he toned it down, but he was even more emotionally relatable um, Sean is hands down my favourite but like that I guess Sean came in a little later one of my big favourites probably my second favourite wrestler of all time is Eddie Guerrero absolutely love Eddie Guerrero and Brock versus Eddie where Eddie wins the belt is hands down is my favourite match of all time it's a great I match I love it it's my absolute favourite match I mean it, it was kind of unexpected at the time as well I yeah because we all expected he was going to be Goldberg and him for the belt yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, switching gears slightly I want to talk about the Welsh wrestling scene um, he sent out a tweet a few months ago, which <laughs> I thought was quite funny, but at the same time, it had a lot of that validity about it. Um, WCPW, they're doing their World Cup tournament, which I think is a great concept. Yeah, I do. I think it's even better that it's uh, not on their um, VOD service, it's free on YouTube. Although, oh, no, that although, yeah, well, exactly, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, obviously, you've got the, uh, the English leg, the Scottish leg. 
and uh, I think you, you sent out a cheeky little tweet asking uh, Art Lads when's the uh, Welsh leg yep heard anything back yet no you heard nothing at all but uh I think it's it always has been the case, like when England was really taken off and Scotland started getting this uprising and stuff like that. Like I remember me and Mark and like Wabo and, and Mike Bird were all just kinda of, hey, Dennis were all just kinda of like well you know there's a lot of good talent here in Wales and I still feel like a lot of time it's forgotten about. And uh, Attack is doing their definitely doing their part doing of drawing, drawing a lot of attention to the Welsh scene, which is great. But I do think we sometimes very much forgotten about. No doubt, uh, Nixon is going off today as well, so she'll go off and fly that flag. No doubt. But uh, Dragon Pro. So if you, if you are looking to be uh, start training down in Wales or the Southwest, definitely look at Dragon Pro. Uh, they're creating some great, great stars. There's some people there who have only been wrestling a year, and they're stealing shows. Like Sierra Loxon had a match at ICW the other day against Kaylee Ray, when people were just blown away by her, and she's been wrestling a year, like literally 12 months. And Bola Rama, they've been wrestling all of 13 or 14 months. Although they are from Hackney. Well, yeah, that's true, <laughs> but they were training in Wales. Um, so... Stuff like that, it's just like, I wouldn't have been, I, would, I was nowhere near as good as they were back then, so I feel like not only is the Welsh scene really strong, but there's new guys coming into the Welsh scene, which when Mark probably goes off to Florida, and hopefully I go off to Patches Green as well, that uh, they'll be able to come up, step up and uh, carry on flying the flag. I want to talk about your um, association with it, Sat, and Pro Wrestling Chaos, mm. where you're doing quite alright for yourself at the minute. I do enjoy Chaos, Chaos is probably one of my favourite places to work. Is that, uh, is that the place where you just let loose and... I'll be honest with you, the relationship I have with Chaos is Dave Mercy tells me what he wants and I tell him no and then I do what I want and he says no and then I do it anyway and then it gets over and then he goes, okay, we'll do it your way. So that's his, no, he's great. Um, it generally, it, it was, it's a real weird one, especially when I look at maybe two years ago, uh, no, probably three years ago now when they first gave me my first book in there. I was literally losing every match. I was the first on the card every show and uh, not really, I was, wasn't doing a lot. And now I go there and I'm the top of the bill and I'm being trusted to carry the, the championship. And I was given the their first big show in Yates where they did 500 people. I was given, he wasn't, wasn't even champion then, I was given the honour of ending the show and ending the feud with Dave Mercy there at the main event. So it's great and if anyone hasn't seen my, my heel stuff, Definitely go check that out. But I also feel there's a really good promo where you like you do a run in and then you cut a promo. Yeah, the level, the level tears yeah. apart promo. Definitely go check that out if you haven't seen it. But it's also, I feel like it's probably a good thing as well that maybe a lot of people haven't seen that stuff because when I do get the chance to potentially change things up at your ICWs or your progress or something like that, people wouldn't have seen my heel stuff. Yeah, and I think people might be very surprised by it. So it's exciting. But chaos. Uh, I will, whatever I do in the future, attack and chaos, uh, two places, of course, progress, but uh, they were the places that kind of allowed me to find my feet so I could come to places like progress or ICW and really turn it up a notch. So I owe them a lot. Um, they say that a wrestler's gimmick or persona is basically themselves turned up to 11. How much of like the mod father gimmick is you? It's me. It's all me. It's yeah. all... Maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more serious in the ring than I need to be, maybe. Maybe I've tried since I come back to get a, have a little bit more fun with it. I've noticed like people going flash more than words, and then you're going, that's me. Yeah, yeah, just having a little bit more, because I am, if anyone's got from this, I am, I, I love, I'm, I'm bubbly, and maybe I am a little bit too intense when I wrestle. Maybe I need to get that little bit of fun across sometimes. But boy, I'm really intense and really stern in the ring, maybe, because I'm, it's, so, it's so important to me, and that, I'm like, okay, I have to be, this is important, I have to be professional. So, yeah, it's me. Uh, the clothes I wear, the music I listen to, uh, everything really. Like, even though it was it was boiling hot yesterday, and I still had a fair pay polo on and stuff like that. And so it is. It understand me, and I've I've got the haircut, listen to the music, and yeah, it's me with the uh, maybe with the volume turned down a little bit. Maybe I need to turn the volume up a little bit and be a little bit more cheeky, chappy in the ring. Maybe so. So what, like you turning heel would be like coming out wearing like. Baseball cap back to front, <laughs> jean, jean shorts around the arse, <coughs> coming out to a bit of grime. Nah, I think if I if I do, uh, I could pull that gimmick off. I'm not gonna lie to you. Go check out. There's a uh, there's a guy called Sp- uh, Bino. Go check out his stuff. And uh, he has a he has a guy who accompanies him called Sparky. Go check that out. I'm not saying nothing anymore. But de- <laughs> he might look a lot like me, and he might be a, a, a scummy child from Cumbran. <laughs> but uh, go check that out. But I feel like. The heel character will just be exactly me, but it'll be me more. It'll be me in a bad mood, and I can't ever get in a bad mood. And I have sometimes I vent, and that, that it'll be it'll be that. 
Nothing wrong with having passion. Exactly. Where's the passion? Passion, yeah, there is. Um, right, I want to finish uh, things off with a word association. Cool. Fire a few names off at you and just first thing that comes into your head. Um, Mike Bird. My trainer. Uh, very underrated. Uh, people need to see more of Mike Bird. Wild Boar. My best friends. Again, stupidly underrated. Him and Bird and Boar have been killing it. But I feel Especially like, in ICW recently. But I feel like you haven't even tapped the surface of Wild Boar yet. And I feel like he's somebody that hopefully in the next 18 months is going to really blow up. And that traffic he was sick. Everything he does though, is like he's got that dive in the corner, he's got that inverse central in the corner, he's got that pop, that power bomb, everything he does is mental. And he's got a great look and... FSU. A lot of fun. Who does it? Oh, I'm getting the Carnage Party hard because like that, literally I'm in the back and it's not my sort of style of music but you can't help but dance exactly, and party yeah. to it. So it's a lot maybe, of fun. Maybe he's one of Andrew's tunes. I Possibly, yeah. But it's uh, yeah, a lot of fun and great tag team. Uh, Drew Parker. Drew's charismatic as hell. Like it, just a proof that he, you only need a character or well, a gimmick, and it can really turn things up for you. But yeah, charismatic as hell. And uh, I'd probably say that he's not the he's probably not the the best young wrestler in the country. But you don't need to be something. So you just need to be something that the crowd can get into. Still very young as well. Yes. Um, Elijah. Abs. Abs. Me and him have a little bit of a uh, uh, a workout competition at the moment going on. So he'll do a he'll do a a ward, a crossfit ward, and he'll send it me with his time, and then I'll beat it, and then he'll send it, and then he'll beat it, and then I'll beat it, and then he can no longer beat it because even though he's in, he looks extremely better. My cardio is just a little bit better than his. So yeah, uh, extreme, and he's going to be so good again. Somebody's only twelve months in the business, and he's doing so so good. Damien Dunn. Maybe the most underrated wrestler in the country. Maybe 100% the most underrated. Can do it all. Talk. Good looking chap. Can wrestle. Uh, needs to come back to progress. Needs to come back. To, needs to go to ICW. Anti fun. That should be everywhere. He should be anti fun everywhere. And no fun done. That's what he should be everywhere. Because it's, it's a great gimmick and it's a lot of fun. Travis Banks. Maybe one of the best in the world right now. I don't think there's anyone at the moment on this show that's having better consistent singles matches and tag matches or matches in general than Travis Banks and I think a lot of that comes down from his passion and intensity. Pro wrestling chaos. Outside of attack I'd probably say home. Uh, Ray Woods and if Dave's no doubt Dave will listen to this and it'll mean the world to him me saying this, but they've given me so many opportunities and allowed me to perfect my character that I, I and when I was when I was hurt as well, they literally paid me paid me full wage to come in and, and keep the brand growing with uh, promos and stuff like that I couldn't I couldn't can't thank them enough that's that pro wrestling that is home that is officially home uh, it's wacky it's crazy again but the, the crowds crowd are mental I love them and it's just a lot of just friends having fun progress wrestling the elites I think that's that's how I would put it if you, if you want to be a, a wrestler's wrestler in Britain you come to progress and that's where you can really showcase how good you are and the fans are just incredible. As I said, I was in a bad mood all last week and I feel maybe a little bit in my own head. I had one match with Haskins yesterday and that's all gone away and I'm happy as Larry now. Nixon Neil. Now see, this is weird. She's going off today and I'm, 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 so, I'm, I'm so happy she's going off. But I will put my hands up and say I'm one of these people that for a long time probably didn't give her the credit she deserved and I thought that... I was probably very hard on, on, on her. And maybe it's because things came a little bit easy for Nixon because she was a very good women's wrestler in a time where maybe the women's wrestling was only just starting to tip the iceberg yeah. but she's worked so hard to get where she is and she deserves every bit of credit happiness and success is coming her way and I look forward to seeing what happens with her but I'll hold my hands up and say I was one of those people that doubted her I did and I've said to her and we spoke about this since and she's proved me wrong and I no doubt she's going to go off to prove the rest of the world wrong because she's absolutely incredible hey man uh, Tyler Bate Talent, just ta- like natural talent. I don't know if there's anyone in this country who has more natural talent than that boy. Uh, in the gym, in the ring, the boy just seems to be able to do anything physically. He's just able to do it. He's like a cute, muscular hamster. He's, he's like he's like Hercules, that's what he is. He's Hercules. Trent Seven. The epitome of charisma. The man oozes it. He has something you cannot teach. Like... He made bingo cool yesterday. You, you, can, you, yeah, you, cannot, you cannot teach what he has. Pete Dunne. The best. I think he might be 
one of the best in the world and I don't just think that now I think he's been one of the best in the world for a very long time I owe him a lot he's helped me loads he's helped me understand wrestling and I can honestly say in this world of wrestling where it's hard, it's hard to be happy for people about being bitter I can hand on heart say that every time Pete succeeds or something I'm the happiest man in the world for him because he really is one of my best friends and he deserves every bit because he's incredible uh, last one Flash Morgan Webster me, I don't know what else to say really. I just, I love wrestling. I hope that comes across, and I hope that, I hope that I get to showcase that not just in Britain, but hopefully beyond. That's nothing I'd say. I met a lot of Americans yesterday, and I think maybe people would say that the gimmick is very Britainized, but mm. all the Americans love it, and I feel that if I give them a chance to go off to, I beat Dick King of Trios, and everyone loved me over there. So if I had the chance to go over to potentially Peter G or anywhere else and kill over there, I think the, the gimmick would get over there as well. So. Final question, where do you see the British wrestling scene in five years? Oh, I don't know, Joe. If you, you said to me five years ago, where do I see it? I couldn't tell you where it is now. I couldn't be telling you that the potential that all of us are now making a full-time living off wrestling without having to leave overseas. I'm not going to tell you that there'd be a WWE UK show on the horizon, that my mates would be signed to, to recontracts where they're able to still work the indies. I haven't got a clue, Joe. Hopefully, bigger and better. Hopefully, 20 times bigger. And we're not just making a living. We're making a very comfortable, excitable living off this. So, I, I, bigger and better places. But, to be honest, Joe, who knows? I don't know. Who, I haven't got a clue. All right. Um, Flash, always a pleasure. Always a treasure. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it.